Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about the Acolytes because we do have a new look, some new pictures, and some words from Daphne Keen. You might know her from Logan, but now she's playing a Jedi Padawan who is half human, half Thielen, Jackie Lon, the apprentice of Master Soul played by Lee jung Jae. Entertainment Weekly say the character was conceptualized when Leslie Headland said, I wanted to see X-23 with a lightsaber in her hand. So that was the influence. And here, my dear friends, we have our first exclusive photo of Jackie, who is part of the investigative team searching for answers as to who is trying to kill all of these Jedi. It's always great to get more alien, main characters in Star Wars, the makeup looks great, the robes look awesome. This is very much a new kind of aesthetic. They didn't go with the pink. They didn't go overboard with a feel and half. And Daphne Keen said this, it was about an hour and a half, two hours to do the makeup in the morning. So I'd usually get picked up around 3.30 a.m. Then I'd go in, and the wonderful makeup artist Rob and Jeremy would sit me in this chair. Then they put a bald cap on her, then they did her eyebrows and her hair. And she said that when she got into the costume, she really felt more like the character she was playing. It changed everything, her movements, her attitude, getting into that frame of mind. Very similar things said by Rosario Dawson, donning the Ahsoka outfit as the Torgruta Jedi. In terms of the character of Jackie herself, she said this, She's a very dedicated Padawan. She's definitely in awe of her master in a very sweet kind of way. She thinks the absolute world of him, but she warns us. This is a very different kind of Padawan-master relationship to the likes of Obi-Wan and Anakin. Her Jedi master is much bigger on authority. I'm the master and you're the Padawan kind of thing. Jackie knows her place. And Daphne says, quote, With everything he says, I have to follow it to the T. So we're gonna see probably some frustration from Master Soul as his Padawan starts to learn and grow, develop in the series and make mistakes, as every Padawan does. And now we have another picture where we see Jackie wielding a green lightsaber. The way this photo was taken by Entertainment Weekly does look very boxed in. It does look rather set-like. Nonetheless, I'm excited to learn more. And on the subject of the series on the whole, as well as working with Leslie Headland, she says this, Leslie's one of the most amazing people I've ever worked with. She's an interesting director in the sense that she has an intimate trust with actors and her crew, that it makes you trust her more. She's so confident in the people she's hiring, and she has such a broad understanding of Star Wars and of cinema, that I truly feel like I would follow that woman to the trenches. We had a lot of conversations about Jackie, but ultimately she was very good at being like, this is what I know for a fact, and then I'm gonna give you space to think about what you want for your character. It's about you. She says, I used to run everything past her because she has such a brilliant mind, and we spoke a lot. I was very stunt focused, so I spoke to her about how she wanted the character to get reflected in those fight scenes. And as I mentioned in my full trailer breakdown, there is a lot of emphasis on the martial arts in this show. So I do think it's warranted that there is some optimism with the physical stuff, the action sequences. Those are set to be pretty intense, and overall just pretty awesome. Well, at least you'd hope so. Now, my dear friends, that is not the only reveal we have for this show. We have some exclusive information, courtesy of Empire Magazine, with the full issue dropping next Thursday. They've revealed a series of new photos, as well as some comments by Leslie Headland, where she reveals why the show is called The Acolyte in the first place. And this provides us a remarkable amount of information. Here's what they said. The Acolyte is a Star Wars project filled with mystery. For one, it's an actual mystery series set 100 years before The Phantom Menace with a spat of Jedi murders prompting an investigation into the culprits behind those deaths. Blah blah blah, we know all of this. And then there's plenty of mystery surrounding Amanda Stenberg's May, a shadowy assassin figure whose role in proceedings is being held under wraps. And here's the big bit. Even the show's title is something of a mystery. Who, or what, even is the Acolyte? Leslie Headland said this, It's a term that originates in the expanded universe. Legends novels which aren't considered canon, but for which Star Wars creators often draw inspiration. She goes on to note, It's a position, essentially, that someone is going to fulfill or step into. She says we know with the Sith, there is a master, and we know there is an apprentice. But she says she is drawing upon a DPU concept of an acolyte, below an apprentice. So maybe the true master of the show is someone like Darth Tenebrous. But that is not what we're focused on. We're focused on something below even the apprentice in that dual relationship, in the rule of two. And so she says, that is where I got the title from. As a deep Star Wars acolyte herself, Hedlund said she is also a big fan of the Clone Wars series and takes inspiration from it. Not to mention Tales of the Bounty Hunters, the Legends anthology book. The idea of an acolyte itself presents another mystery. Is it May? Or is it someone else? Well, Stenberg said this, it's a lot more complicated than that. 
more complex than you think, which is the point. Hopefully, if we did our job right, the show makes it an interesting interrogation into what it means to be on the light side or the dark. Let the investigation begin. Even though they're teasing there is more than meets the eye, I would predict May is the Acolyte. And not only this, her character design itself is inspired by Star Wars Legends. Sith Acolyte was a rank in the Sith Order prior to Darth Bane's reformation, but it was clearly around long after, and this rank was held for those who were still to prove themselves and had just begun the path to darkness under the tutelage of a Sith. But they weren't allowed to bear the name Sith just yet. They still needed to pass the trials and tribulations, in this case, killing Jedi. And it was perfect, because the true Lord of the Sith would command their actions and still stay hidden in the shadows, which might answer the mystery of why the Jedi in this show don't think it's a Sith. Acolytes were typically trained in secret, and it's very reassuring, at least to my estimation, that Leslie is so engulfed by the expanded universe and wants to bring some of those concepts into canon. I see it as an absolute win, but let's hope the execution is just as good as these words. Empire Magazine finished with this. The Acolyte is presenting fans something which has been long part of the Star Wars mythos, but rarely something depicted in live action. Go back before Order 66, before the events of the prequel trilogy, and the galaxy was once flooded with Jedi. The sight of lightsaber wielders moving en masse was a major moment at the end of Episode 2 Attack of the Clones, but given that Palpatine and Vader bumped most of the other Jedi a few years later, it's rarely been seen again. Multiple live-action Jedi with their lightsabers ignited. The Acolyte, though, is set to deliver exactly that, and it's a time Leslie Headland promises is simply stacked with Jedi, which itself begs a question that the show is going to answer. If the Jedi were so powerful and flourishing, what are the seeds, for a hundred years down the line, of it slipping so badly? And that is part of the bigger picture at play in this show. She said this, I was very interested in how did the Jedi get to where they are in The Phantom Menace. You're definitely going to get a sense of that. The writing is on the wall. With the Jedi firmly in charge, the Acolyte's early flickers of a looming dark side threat offers a new kind of Star Wars dynamic. The quote-unquote war of this Star Wars is much smaller. It's far more personal, she says, because the real war is between the characters. And I'm also hoping, my dear friends, Empire Magazine gives us a proper first look at the Trade Federation, the Neimoidians, also confirmed by the Star Wars Celebration footage. But share your thoughts on all of today's reveals in the comments down below. Does this make you excited? Why so, why not? And if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next video. May the Force be with you, always.